All right. So let's step into the teaching today. So today we're going to conclude the teaching on finances. And it will, be not, it will not be complete if we keep talking about the very natural part of finances. And we do not talk about the spiritual side of finances. And one of the things, so, so, so we're going to talk about growing. I mean, we've called it increasing the financial flow or growing in financial grace. Let's turn to 3 John verse 2. 3 John, 3 John has one chapter, so it's just 3 John verse 2. John wrote by the Spirit this. It says, It's a beloved. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as what? Oh, don't go that way this morning. Even as what? Even as your soul prospers. And the reason I'm saying so is this, because financial state starts with a change of mindset. Financial change starts with a change of mindset. Every time you see a lasting financial change, it starts with a change of mindset. Look at Isaac was going to go down to Egypt because there was famine in Egypt. But, you know, something God spoke to him and God began to give him a word. God told him that stay in this land and in this land you're going to be a fruit. Listen to me. Everyone look up here, please. I want to say something important. Maybe this is, will help you. If you believe you cannot do well in Nigeria. You're correct. You will not do well. You know why? Because you believe so. If you don't believe that what you do can make you a millionaire, it's either you change what you do or you change your belief about what you do. The reason why is that it's going to be ultimately just like you thought it to be. It's your belief. The Bible says this way, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So many people are involved in businesses and cannot see themselves become a multimillionaire from doing that business. The question is this, you will not become that person because you don't see it. And some people feel as if, as long as I'm in this country, they say, this country frustrates everybody. I understand what you're saying. I'm not denying that we have a lot of issues. But the question is this, some people are doing well. And just for you to know, just in case you don't know, the countries are like this have the biggest opportunities. Oh, yes. You know why? The biggest, the, the, big, the larger the problems, the larger the opportunity. Glory to God. So, if your finance is going to change, one of the things that God will do for you, and someone says, how do I know my finance is going to change? This is what you're going to know. Your mindset will start changing. And if your mindset is not changing, then you need to go back and do some work. If your finance is going to change, your mind, it says, why? He said, beloved, I wish you prosper even as your soul prospers. So how do I know my finance is going to change? Because my mindset has begun to change. The way I see money, the way I handle money, the way I talk about money has begun to change. Glory to God. Look, you know, I was speaking to this guy. He's in real estate. And he came from a very poor background. He came from, you know, the neighboring state. He, 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 he didn't even have enough money to go to a proper university. He went to a college of education. And, you know, when he went to college of education, he said, he, he finished school and was working as an agent. He said, as I work as an agent, and that's the beauty. Oh, as I worked as an agent, one of the beautiful things was that he began to interact with rich people, although he was poor. And he just said, I just noticed how they thought. I just began to see the gaps. He says, when I began to see the gaps, I could tell that something was changing in me. And I'm saying so because if something is going to, I'm just going back to it. If something is going to change, the first thing must change is the way you see. The way your mind works. The way you see money. Do you see money as, do you see money as something that runs away from you or something that belongs to you? Do you see yourself as blessed or as a hustler? And the reason why is that your financial mindset will determine your behavior. Your behavior will determine your actions. And your action will determine your results. And that's why God wants to change a man. Look at 2 Chronicles 20, 20. He said, believe the Lord your God, so shall he be established. He said, believe as prophet, what will happen, so shall he prosper. He says, if I want to change you, I'm going to send someone to your life that is going to what? Say something that will change you. 
So how does God change people? The, the, see, God changes, how does God change our belief system? God apparently changed our belief system through revelation. Through revelation. How does God do that? Number one, God begins to change your belief. How does God change your belief? It's a long process. God change your belief through a lot of things. But one of the easiest ways, everyone look at me, if you just want to grow rich, just have richer friends. Simple. Because there's a way they talk that it changes your standards. Let me give you an example. I, I'm not sure if I did it some weeks ago, but I'll do it again. Akin, will you please come? Um, maybe Lekha, come. Lekha, will you please come? Just face the church. These two people are discussing. And they just are saying, ah, will you take 40? Will you take 80? No, I will take 20. So start discussing. Will you take 40? Will you take 20? Will you... you not knowing anything. Well, if they say 20, if they say, what are you talking about? What amount will come to your mind? What? What? <laughs> Someone said 20K. Someone said, because you just knowing them. What do you think? Someone said, because I know them millions, right? If the same conversation and the people just change, and this was Dangote, and this was the Tonai, and they went 20, no, 40, 80, 50. What do you think they're talking about? Millions, millions of what? Millions. You know why? Because your association determines your language. You know, it just, your association raises your standards. I, I, you, know, you know, the kind of friends I have, I can't be like, I prayed one hour. And like, oh, you prayed one hour? No, 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 no. That's not like, oh, you, that's expectation. But some, some, some of your associations, ah, you fasted today. Hey, oh boy, you don't need to grow. Ah, you're not serious, oh. Ah. The, the reason why is that, and the more they do that to you, the more that you think that what is normal is abnormal. So when you have friends that you say 10 million, you say, hey, you don't hammer. You know, there's a way it gives you the sense of comfort. So when your life wants to change, God brings a relationship that raises your standard. You know what? So most of the time, the reason why we don't like relationship is this. Those relationships are stretching. So most of us defer to go to relationships that what? That accommodating and love our current space, not the relationship that what? Stretches us. Thank you, sirs. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So when God wants to change you, one of the things God begins to change you, he, he, he just puts you in those kind of, he, he puts you in a place where the language is different. He puts you in a place where it challenges your thinking. Then I said this last week and I'm going to say it away. When God wants to change you, God begins to throw financial weight at you. What does, what does financial weight mean? God begins to suggest into you financial assignments or projects. So I give an example. You go over driving, and God will say, look on the right. And it says, that's good. It says, that house, why not? Is it not, why, why? And it says, God says, find out the price. And God will say, buy it. And you'll be like, Lord, that house is 200 million. And God puts it there. And you wonder, why? Is, and God is hoping that you will realize when he says, buy it, that you have grace. Where are my weights? So this is what God does. This is what God does. This is what God does. When God wants to bless you, he will put weight on you. So he will, he will just throw weight on you. And you have three options. When God throws weight on you, and God tells you, you've been doing your business for a car for a long time. Get a shop. And you're like, ah, God, get a shop. A shop will cost three million. And God has put weight on you. You don't understand what, what God does. God wants to build your financial muscle. But he needs to put weight so that you can build your financial muscle. You build your financial muscle not by talking. It's by weights. He gives you weight so that you can build your financial muscle. God says, why not open a dollar investment? Say, how much do I have saved? But, but the reason why God is putting weight on you so that you can build your financial muscles. And there are three options when God puts weight on you. Come and stand to my right. When God puts weight on you and God tells you to do something, that will be, you can just drop it and say, God, I don't want to do that. And the weight will be on the floor. But your financial muscles will never be built. And there will be someone else that God will give the weight. 
and the person will struggle and will begin to build away gradually. Gradually. And the third category, God will keep you some weight. And instead of them to carry it, they want to be very smart. They will look for someone to help them. And the person will hold their hand and carry the weight. How do I know? This is how I know. God gives you the suggestion and says, buy the house. And the house costs 40 million. And there's no way, but you have you now have a strong desire to buy it. And you know, all of a sudden you remember there's this allergy you used to sleep with when you were not born again. That have been calling you, but you've not picked up his phone. You go back to Alaji and say, Alaji, I missed you. And after being there for three days, laying on the altar and doing altar services, praise the Lord, Alaji writes you a check and you buy the house. You come back to church. Hallelujah. My big God has done it. And Miss Mugget, listen, we know who your big God is. We know that big God is not Jehovah. We know it's Alaji somewhere. Listen to me. What you don't realize is this. When God wants to do something and you do it in the flesh, that's what the Bible calls Ishmael. Ishmael is man's effort to produce what the Spirit wants to do. Abraham was meant to have a child. He could not wait on God. What did he do? He went on to his maid called Haggai. They eventually had a child, but it was Ishmael. Why? Ishmael is a type of man's effort, initiative, to produce what the Spirit wants to do, but not Isaac. Isaac is when the spirit walks through you to produce what he wants to do. What many people are carrying around and calling testimonies today is not Isaac, it's Ishmael. Because it was the flesh that produced it. You know what happened? Elijah ultimately helps you to buy the house. The weight is down. But guess what? Your muscles are not built. Because it was not by the arm of the spirit that you did that. When they say reproduce the testimony, you cannot reproduce it again. Because you were, there's nothing you learned. The muscles were not built. You depended on them of flesh. Are, are you hearing me, somebody? And many of you don't realize that that's why God allows people to disappoint you. You know why? Because until they disappoint you, you cannot get up and walk. Some people in your life, they are helpful, but the truth is that they are the crutches in which you walk in life. I'm telling you, and some of you are here, you are the one that is destroying their life. You are the one that is giving them crutch and wheelchair. You are the one that is giving them crutch and wheelchair. And God is saying that unto that person, that's why the Bible said, the year King Uzziah died, he said, I saw the Lord. He said, as long as the King Uzziah was alive, I never saw anything. I'm telling you, as long as there's that person giving you handouts, helping you this, you will not know what you can do. But the Bible says the year King of Zion side, he said, ladies and gentlemen, I saw the Lord. And many of you wonder why Ozai had to die. Ozai had to die so that you can see. When I was young, and this is very powerful, my mother bought this local chicken. This is the first time I saw them in my life, in my house. And when he bought the local chicken, he bought the local chicken, very powerful. And the local chicken began to have eggs. In this first time, I'll see like chicken incubate the eggs and become hens, you know, chicks. So this chicken had maybe about maybe 10 eggs, very fat out chick, you know, and she incubated. And there was all the eggs hatched and the chicks came out, except for one, the, night, the tenth one. So I kept looking at it for like 24 hours. I was like, ah, this thing has not come out. I was afraid I would die inside the shell. So me being always compassionate, I went to look for a barrel. I poked the egg and until the end came, and great enough, the end actually came out. But what I, the chick actually came out. But what I noticed was the chick could not walk. Ah, why couldn't the chick walk? So I left it. By the next day I came back, the chick had died. So I told my mother. <laughs> my mother said, you don't understand these things. He said, when the chick wants to come out, that's when he develops muscles in the leg. That is when he develops muscles, he uses the leg muscles to break the shell. That if he doesn't develop muscles in the legs, he will not be able to move. If he cannot move, he cannot feed. He said, so by you assisting it, you destroy the development of muscle in the leg. And because he could not move, he could not feed. He said, because he could not feed, he died eventually. Many of you think that God is hitting you. God is helping you develop muscles in your leg. You thought they fire you. God is helping you develop what muscles. You say, why was I born in Nigeria? Because you need muscles. 
I'm telling you, you need muscles. All your friends that are born abroad, do they have muscles? No. Ah, by the time they see what you can do with ten thousand dollars, how you can turn it over, they will say, Ah, where do you live? How do you think like this? They say, Why are you guys so aggressive? I say, We were born into a place where we need muscles. But in some people to get muscles, they'll be looking for someone to help. And that's why you see those people, they do well at a certain level, but they cannot repeat their testimony because muscles are not there. You know why? When God gives you weight, weight will come and go. But when your muscles are built, they are built forever. And many of you are here. When, when, you know, when I taught this in the fourth and third service last week, I taught it very expansively. One of the businessmen said, Pastor, he said, you will make me blow. And this guy is doing successful already. He said, the reason why they want to come to church when you teach, I will leave church like King Kong. He said, after the fourth service last Sunday, I just looked at my wife. I said, I'm not going home. I'm going to the office. My wife said, how do you know? I'm not going home. I'm going to the office. He said, Pastor has given me an assignment. He went there. He said, I've been trying to do a deal for $2 million. I knew the right thing to do. But because the money was large for me, I just did that. I just went back, called my accountant, sent the paper I signed. He said, because I understood for the first time that God was putting weight on me and the reason why I was not running away was because it was inconvenient. It was inconvenient. I'm telling you, because God will put weight on you and the weight will be greater than your muscle strength because it needs to build it. And when you can master three kg, God gives you extra weight. Bring extra weight. God is not joking. You are the light of the world. Because someone say, hey, I'm the light of the world. No, 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 no. If I'm the light of the world, you are going to have global problems. <laughs> you, you, God says, you've mastered three kg. He gives you. He gives you. This one is you, 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 even me, my, you, one, two. Some of you, the weight you have to carry that you have to employ one staff. That's the weight you have to carry. Some of you, the weight you have to carry that you have to start an office in the Koi. Some of you, the weight you have to carry, you have to start an international office. We are saying that, eh, you know, and the reason why you're not starting is not because it's not the right thing to do. Because you're, you don't like the discomfort it will bring to you. And God is saying that you will grow out of your comfort zones. The question is this. What weight is God putting on you that you're running away from? Thank you. Yeah. And let me even bring you to spiritual life. Many of you, the Lord has been dealing with you about your tithe and your offerings. Some of you are here. Since last year, I've been talking to you about it. You say, next month. This is not much. You say, you start in January. This is not much. You say, next month. And God is saying, you don't understand this thing. The reason why I put weight on you is not for yourself. I'm helping you to build what? Muscles. The reason why is that a big opportunity will come, but you will not have the muscle to carry it. Build muscles. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Does this make sense to you? Yes, I'm, wanting to, I'm wanting to right now take a minute and write in your notebook something you must write at this service. Yeah. Because I believe a lot of people have a next step from this. Some of you, it's the fact that God has been telling you, buy a plot of land. And, you'll be, and God that tells you know where the grace is. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So one of the ways that God really changes us is by changing our mindset. God changing us by putting weight. By putting weight on our lives. We begin to put weight on our lives. The, the another thing we want to say is that what mindset is, God, what mindset is God challenging me to change that I'm holding on to? Very powerful. What mindset is God challenging me to change? That I'm holding on to. What mindset is God challenging me to change that I'm holding on to? And God is saying to you that you should have an, you should have an investment of this amount and you're holding on to it. God is saying to you that you should be so generous and you're holding on. What is the mindset that God is challenging you to change that you're holding on to? Why is God calling for expansion? Also say, maybe God is asking you to do a BNB in the US. Maybe it's God is asking you to go into the international market. And your fear is pulling you back. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. Let's begin to delve into the second aspect of this. So let's begin to delve into the second aspect of this by looking at what grace does when it comes to finances. What grace does... When it comes to finance, let's turn our Bible to First Corinthians chapter fifteen. And it's amazing because when you read, even people that have done so well in the natural world, and they are not even Christian, they will tell you that at the end 
you know, with all my principles, there's just a place of luck. They, that's what they will call it. They, they will say there's just something that made sure that I was in the right conversation. I was born in the right country. I moved to this place. There was just something that assisted me in the whole process. First Corinthians chapter 15 in verse 10. The place of grace. And let me just show you this. It is very powerful. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, that's weak. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory to God. See what the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. But Paul says that, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain. Question. How is grace bestowed on you? Grace comes as weights. Uh, how is grace bestowed on you? Grace comes as demand. How do you waste the grace of God? By you not yielding to the demand, the waste, the grace goes to waste. Someone says, is it possible to waste the grace of God? It's right there. Paul says this. He says that, he says, I did not put the grace of God in vain. So you can be here and you're carrying grace for a one billionaire business. But because of your fear, you are fishing in a 50 billionaire business because it's comfortable for you. And you are wasting the grace that is available. You can be here and you are, you are, by grace, you should be in the global field. But you find yourself playing in shallow waters and you are wasting the grace on your life. So see what the Bible says here. Very powerful. Paul says that by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace which was bestowed on me was not in vain. He says, what did the grace do? So one... When grace comes upon you, grace comes with capacity and demand. But what you have to do is this. It says, but I labored. That means that when you saw the way I walked, I did not walk that way because of me. It says, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I. He said, it was the grace of God that was within me. What was Paul saying? Very powerful. Paul was saying this very powerful teaching. He said, the way I did my business, it was not Harvard. The way I did my business, there was grace in me. You saw the way I walked, but behind the way I walked, that there was a grace at work. There is a way I think. You know, let me tell you something. Eh? Ah, when you see people that have grace, their outlook to life shows it. You just wonder that, you know, why does this guy think this way? He thinks I could develop grace. And let me tell you, when I was a younger Christian... I used to feel people were not wise, intelligent, stupid, not driven. Now I don't think that's way again. You know what I say? When people just talk, I said, it is not given to them to know. That's it. Because that's what Jesus Christ said. Jesus Christ said, to them that without, it is not given to them to know. They will do kitty kitty, kitty kitty kitty. They cannot see it. They will jump up and down. They cannot see it. You will take book and say, this book help me take. They cannot see it. Because it is not given to them to know. That's why the Bible says, as he taught, he opened their understanding. He gave them grace to see. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? See, <laughs> you don't understand. When you have grace, your lot will be bigger in life. The Bible says in Matthew 25, there were three servants. One had five talents. One had two talents. One had one talent. Did you ask yourself why God gave them different things? Let's look at it. Matthew, I don't want to tell you so that you can go and study by yourself. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. Look at it. Okay. Matthew chapter 25 and verse 15. The Bible says, And he gave unto one, and he gave, and unto one he gave. What did he give? Five talent. Because he was taller? Because he was the first one? You will see. The Bible says, And he gave to another what? And he gave to one what? Every man according to what? Did you see that? Grace is ability. God says what you, and let me say something to you. Eh? The one that has one, before he can meet up with the one that has five, he will work harder. And the reason why is that from grace, the playing ground will not even. Where are my drums? <laughs> what I want to teach you is to be how the person that has five, not one. All fingers are not equal, but yours should not be the shortest. Oh, you didn't hear me. I said all fingers are not equal, but yours should not be the shortest. Do you agree with me? Aha. Uh -huh. 
Listen, this is how life is. Everybody starts at this place. This everybody. We all went to school together, two of us. We all went to, two of us at this place. But one has learned the principle of how to increase grace. He moves from a basin, he moves to a bucket. He moves from a bucket, he moves to a drum. You now keep saying that, ah, but we all studied law. We all open legal practitioner. How come that you are not getting drum results? I'm still getting basin results. The reason why is that I've learned the principle that moves capacities. And you know the thing about grace? Grace is so powerful that you don't see it, but you only see its operation. It's like a magnet. You will see the metal moving, but you don't see what, what's moving it. It's not there. And let me say something to you. When this guy is playing, playing in the game of water, before this guy can win this guy, no matter the hard work, ah, before this guy can win this guy, they say feel a drum. Someone is feeling with this. Someone is feeling with this. And this person will win. Ah, I'm not saying he cannot win, no, but we will put more effort than ever than this person. Because what he has, the capacity of the grace level, is way lower than what this guy has. What did Paul say? Did you not see what Paul said? Paul said, according to the grace given not to him as an apostle, Paul was not the first among the apostles. I hope you know that. Paul is the only apostle that never saw just Christ face to face. But by the reason of grace, Peter said about Paul, he said, our brother Paul, the things he wrote are hard. He said, we that saw Jesus Christ, he said, we don't understand. He said, we saved with him for three and a half years. He said, this guy did not see him. He wrote about him. We that saw him, we don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> Paul looked at, see, you don't understand, when Paul, <laughs> when Paul got born again, he was, his follow-up teacher was Barnabas. Barnabas was in the book of Paul. His pastor was Peter. Peter said, even the things about Paul is right. Sir. Even we that taught him, we don't understand where he got it from. He said, we can tell this in his journey 100% accurate. See what Paul said. Let's go back again. <laughs> so Paul had to explain that, listen man, this is how this thing works. So. I know you see the right thing, but behind it, there's an engine. Ah, yeah. <laughs> so let me tell you something. Grace does not only determine capacity, it determines the engine that drives everything. First, let's go back. <laughs> First Corinthians 15 verse 10 again. First Corinthians 15 verse 10. Bring my speakers for me, please. Look at what it says. It says, By the grace of God, I am what I am, and the grace was not bestowed upon me in vain. What is grace? Grace is an engine. Put the speakers here. You know, just two small speakers. Just two small speakers. Let me see. Yeah, just two small. This is like this. I wish I had some time, but I don't in this service. If I play music from this, and I play music from this one, what? What will happen? If you like, increase the volume. It's no matter of volume. It's engine. It's <laughs> oh my God. It's engine work. You know, someone say, it's the country I'm in. It's engine work. If you like, increase the volume. Because this and this are not the same. They are not made. When this blast music, the whole place, you know. But this is just, you know, because the thing is this. Many of you are this size wanting to achieve this size. Are you hearing me? This is the problem. You know, if you, you know, if I now say, give me one of these speakers on the stage, that's the end of the matter. <laughs> so, you are this size, you want to play this size. That's not how it works. Paul says, let me tell you something. The design is a design of grace. Hey! And the reason I'm showing this is this. Ever look at me. When you see people that are really successful, they will tell you the story. They will tell you the story. They say, listen, we worked hard. We studied. We were strategic. But ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, there's something that played in our favor that even we cannot understand. Ask people that had the most successful marriages. They'll say that, you know what? How I chose this great man, I don't know. Because I was a useless man. How I chose this wife like this. He said, I was just, I was a player. 
God just help me. Because, they, you know, what they're saying is, you would think that they don't want to talk. He's not saying they don't want to talk. But they know that behind all the talking, there was a puppet master pulling the strings. That's the power of grace. It's grace that will make you be in the right conversation. I want to ask you, what made Joseph notice they were sad? Not what made him ask. Ask was that he was a kind person. Why did he notice that money? It was grace that altered the step there. Because he needed to ask so that in two years' time, they two can be, can be asked for. When you read this, David, the story of David and Goliath, do you know in the Bible? The Bible says David and um, Goliath came out once in a while, not every time. Why was it that it was when David got to battle? He had not even got in there that Goliath began to speak. If he had come 10 minutes after, he would have not seen him. If he had come 10 minutes before, he had not seen it. Listen to me. Goliath needed to appear so that David can be announced. That's grace. Grace makes the factors that enables your prosperity come together. One of my closest friends. Closest friends. He said when he finished school, he said he was going to get a job. He got a very good job. I think in an oil company. And God told him to resign. He said, go and study. This was in the 90s, in the early 90s. He said, go and study something in telecommunications. And he said, God, how can I go and study telecommunications? We don't even have mobile phone services in Nigeria. The only company that works in Nigeria is Nitel. That was in the 90s. And God said, you heard me. He went to study. He went to study in somewhere like maybe all those Asian and all those Middle East countries, like Iraq, Pakistan, that's where he studied. Where they were. And he trained. He trained under who are we? By the time the government changed and they brought telecommunications company and they were trying to recruit, the company, his company was consulting with the company. And before you knew it, he became the director in charge of technical service, one of the youngest in the history of telecommunication. The reason why was that somehow he had had prepared for what is to come. By the time, by the time MTN, um, Econet, they all got here. Nigerians were not looking for how to study to now be skilled because they had, we didn't have that skill because it was a new industry. But because of grace, he had been prepared ahead of time. He had had almost six to seven years experience. So there was nobody qualified like him. All his contemporaries were foreigners. Because those are the people that were had used to mobile tele te telecommunication technologies. The power of grace, sir. The power of grace. <sighs> Hallelujah. It's grace that makes you have five when someone has one. It's way that gives you ten when others have two. Now, the question is this. Now, this is the question. And this is, this is where it gets really powerful. The question is this. So, I understand the power of grace. But exactly how do I tap into it? And I believe in my heart that there is a giving and grace connection. And some of you are going to lose it. And like, oh, wow, they're going to talk about giving. Just hold on for a second. And if it doesn't make sense to you, you can throw it away. You've learned a lot in the message already. Let me show you something quickly. 2 Kings chapter, chapter 2, 3, verse 27. Because this is a spiritual sign. Listen to me. When you hear people in Africa do money ritual, do you think they're idiots? The reason why people do such things, you may have all the explanation, but if it doesn't work, Nigerians are not stupid to kill their mother and their father and take their left eye. Most of the kidnapping and disappearing, you see people are trading people for spiritual powers. And the reason why is that they don't know they can guess that grace free of, free of charge in Christ Jesus. They are going for demonic sources to get those, that kind of grace. I mean, someone told me, next level prayer we prayed. One guy came to meet me, top official in the, in, in the States. He said, Pastor, please pray for me. He said, I joined government. So they said, we could join. I thought it was like a country club. Until we got there, they all gave us, we were all stripped naked. He said, he said, Pastor, I just can't tell you the names. All the war and war were there. We all stripped naked and wore white cloths. He said, you see governors there, white cloths. He said, I said, what am I doing there? Me, tongue-talking believer. He said, they gave us lantern, they gave us this, they gave us that. Ah. He said, they said, you take lantern. He said, as I was saying lantern, I didn't know how to turn back. I didn't know what to do. He said, I look like, I look like the idiot among them. He said, I was just praying in tongues. I said, you were in the occult power, you are praying in tongues. <laughs> 
He said, that's why I've come right now, because I don't know what the lantern has put down. I don't know what lantern that is. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Second Kings chapter 3. Verse 27. But let's go verse 20, 20, 26. <laughs> See, one of the things, let me tell you, this, there, there are four reasons why God tells us to give. And it's connected to grace. Because one of the reasons why God gives, tells us to give is that because our giving creates portals for intervention. God, it, God uses the giving to create what it will open a portal for intervention. Look at this. Second Kings 3 verse 26. Are you ready? No, come on. Are you ready? Let's shoot together. One to go. And the king of Moab saw that the battle was too sore for him. He said the battle was difficult for him. When the king of Moab saw it was a business battle, he said, that, hey, I will lose this contract. When he saw that, hey, I will not get this approval. When he saw the medical report, it was too difficult. He intensified. He took with him 700 men that drew sword. This was special sword men. He took them. It was the airline force. What did he do? He said, so that they can break through to the king of Edom. When he got to it, he took the best consultant. How can we move forward? How can we have a breakthrough financially? How can we get married? How can we change this? See what the Bible says. The Bible says they could not. This is what you call breakthrough. They could not break through. Look at the next thing. This was a pecan king. He understood concept. 20, 27. Then, when he said he couldn't break through, he took what? No, come on, read to me. I don't want to read. Come on, want to go? That should reign in his stead. And did what? Did you he hear that? He took his son. That should be the king. He said, if you cannot win physically, let's bring the spiritual. He said, where are the gods of Edom? He took the gods, burned him. You know what Mr. King your son? He said, burn him. This is my greatest fear. He said, let me give it away. He burned him. What happened next? The Bible says, as soon as he was born, there was what? Great indignation against Israel. From nowhere, things worked against Israel. From nowhere, things worked. The Bible says, and they departed. Israel retreated. I said, what grace does is that it makes all the factors of prosperity come together. Either in the positive or negative. It doesn't mean that that's what it does. As soon as it is. So, why does God tell us to give? The reason why God tells us to give is this. So that the portals for intervention can open up. One lady was saying that. He said, we've been going for IVF. I just told my husband. We have invested enough in doctors. This morning for IVF, I will take it as a seat and lay it on the sacrifice in NLP. He said, my husband said, I hope you know that you are going crazy. They had a big fight. I didn't even suggest it to you that you do. He said, you know what happened? I did it. He said, Pastor, two months after I got pregnant. He said, I told God, I can't be giving to you and be paying doctors. One person must collect the money. Ah, it was a case of intervention. You heard the testimony some time ago about someone that was believing God for a, sal- for a promotion and he began to give double tithe. He began to give double tithe. He said, Pastor, this is not the promotion in our company, but it opened. The reason why is this, you know, this is why this is powerful. Acts chapter 10 verse 4. Acts 10 verse 4. Let me put there. Acts chapter 10 verse 4. The reason why is that every time you give, you are raising a memorial for intervention. Acts chapter 10 verse 4. Glory to God. Why does God ask us to give? Did, did you hear him at the back? Acts chapter 10 verse 4. Do you have it? The Bible says, see what it says. And the angel looked at him, up to him and he said, he was afraid. And he said, what is it, Lord? And the angel said to him, thy prayers and what? Thy arms. Your arm means your giving has done what they have come up before God. What does your giving do before God? Give me the khakis again. Glory to God. This is what your giving does before God. And this is where grace comes in. This is my son. I'm going out. And he says, Daddy, please don't. No, no, I want to follow. I said, I'm not going far. He said, I know you're going far. I said, take my car keys. What? He knows I can't go without my car. So there's something he holds on to. Your giving gives you something to hold on to. And say, Lord, I've done something. It becomes a seed faith. You hold on to it. This thing is settled. This is for everyone that needs intervention. Because your giving opens portal. You, you, you know that this was there I released my seed. You know you hold on to something. 
Are you here? The second thing that you're giving does is this. Oh, glory to God. I say hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 15. So all of you that need intervention, you know what to do. So when we're saying that you need to learn how to fight, that's how you exercise your faith. And if you've not been doing that, it's something you have to start. And more than that, you need to learn to give your sacrifices. And let me say this quickly. Everyone look up here. If the only place you give to churches, if the only place you give money to is church, you are wrong. If the only person you give money to is your pastor, you are wrong. What about your mother? You must learn to give to your parents. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, that is the giving that has first a blessing. A lot of people, you just say, hey, sit to the man of God, sit to the man of God. Your, your parents in God, they are, they are who? Parents of the devil. Today is Mother's Day. Go and give them something. When you give them something, say, Mama, bless me. She brought you into the world. Bless me. Because there's a polarization in which it seems as if the only giving is to the church. Listen, you must know there are different kinds of givings and they produce different kinds of graces. Are you here? Is it making sense to someone? Today's Mother's Day. Have you sent her something? Do you plan to send her something? Glory to God. I believe this is my life, last scripture. What does God ask us to give? Deuteronomy chapter 15. Deuteronomy chapter 15. Because you need to make up your mind. Even if this is my grace level, I can move here. Even if it's my grace level, I can become like this speaker. So, everybody, God starts you off at a place where you can grow in grace. Everybody started at a place where you can what? Go in grace. God uses our giving to expand our capacity. Oh, yes. God uses our giving to expand our capacity. I've learned over time, most of the people that I know that are doing well financially, they are very generous. Not all of them, most of them. Because there's just a way it works with the mind. See what the Bible says, John chapter 15. Why does God ask us to give? This is what giving does for you as a person. Leave God out of this verse. John chapter 15, verse 11. Glory to God. See what the Bible says. This is very powerful. Let's read together. Are you ready? For what? For the poor shall never cease out of the land. Therefore I command you that thou shalt open thy hands wide unto thy brother and unto the poor. To the needy and in the land. And if thy brother an Hebrew man or an Hebrew man, I'm just going to jump. Um, let me just not jump in. He said, be sold and serve thee for six years. In the seventh year, thou shalt let him go. And thou shalt send him out free from thee. And thou shalt not let him go empty-handed. He says in verse 14, Thou shalt furnish him liberally out of thy flock, of thy floor, of thy winepress, and the Lord thy God shall bless thee, that, that the, where will the Lord has blessed thee, and thou shalt give to him. Verse 15. Why did he say you should do it? Verse 15. For you shall remember, you were a born man in Egypt, and the Lord redeemed you. This is what God is saying to you. I'm just showing you, you can go back and read. God is saying this is, there's a mental state I want you to have that you are the haver and the giver. Because the more you stay in the mental state of a haver and a giver, you will have and give. You will have and give. So all of you that are struggling, this is why you must give. The reason why is that your natural state that I'm struggling is not enough. I'm struggling. It's not enough. And what happens to you? As a man thinking his heart, so we see. So what you produce, I'm struggling. It's not enough. I'm struggling. Not enough. Every time you give, your mental image switches so that I have. I have. I have to give. I have to give. I have to give. And the moment that switches, what will happen in life? You will begin to have to give. You. So that's why people say you give your way to prosperity. I know the way they say it sometimes is confusing, but this is what happens. Because this thing needs to change. And that's why if you don't have and you give, you struggle. Your mind will be like, you mad. You know why I say you are you mad? Because it's not natural with this position of struggle to give. So he's questioning you and said that as a hustler, shut up, don't do that. But you're telling yourself that I'm changing this thing. I'm changing this thing. I'm changing this. And let me tell you something. Once your position moves from the hustler and the struggler into the flourishing and the blessed, guess what? Once you see it, you'll begin to take steps that will make you blessed. Glory to God. 
Someone said, I've that mindset. That's very powerful. Today is a decision. The decision is number one. What weight is God putting on you for your finances? So number two, will you make up your mind today and start be generous? You will start by giving to your parents. You will help the poor and be a consistent person in your titan offering. It's a decision. Some people will do it one month and stop. But this thing works with time. But this is what I know. That as you do this, you increase the portal of intervention. Cornelius says that your arms has become a memorial. Ah, listen to me. I want to ask you a question. All the times you didn't give and you spent on yourself, where is it? It's gone. It's the one you give to God that becomes a memorial. Oh, yeah. Your salary last year, where is it? Where is it? Everything is gone now. The only one that stays is the one that you give to God. Baptism becomes a memorial. When something happens to you, you have a khaki to hold on to. You say, Father, you are not going anywhere. I have the khaki. Because there's a seed in the ground. Someone's job was threatened. He said, God, I'm never going to pray about it. I'm a tighter. Ah. He said, if I lose my job, you feel it. Because I know I'm a vital part of the kingdom financially. Are you not here? Some of you have people that sponsor you financially. When they say their company's not doing well, don't take it serious. Talk to me now. Yes. When you were in school, you had one uncle that used to help you, right? When they say things are tough, you will go and pray about it. Not because you work in the company, though. But because you know that it's prosperity is connected to your own. When you know you raise memoria, ah, and something shakes you, even the angels know that if this person goes down, this goes down, let's save the person. Right. You'll make yourself that person that God saves. Praise God. And I want to say to you today, all of you that don't have the habit of helping the poor, you have to start change. All of you that don't have the habit of giving to your parents, you have to change. When I say help the poor, there are family members that you can start with. Yeah, all of you that don't have the habit of being, because generosity is not what you do in a church, it's not about tithing, it's a lifestyle. A generous person doesn't need to find a need to give to, he gives by the way. Praise God. Stand up, let us pray.